Hello everybody, a uh, very very good morning to all of you. Welcome once again to the Study IQ IAS English. My name is Abhishek Singh and dear students, today I am going to talk about the another great battle which redefined, reshaped the Indian history and that is the second battle of Panipat. Alright, so in the second battle of Panipat, what were the major incidents? How did this battle take place and who were the belligerents in this two ba in this battle what was the aftermath of this battle we will just try to understand all these things so let us start without any further delay first of all if we talk about the battle of panipat right the panipat has always been a site where there have been a number of battles which have redefined the indian history time and again but this battle, this second battle of Panipat, in fact, that has to be considered as one of the most significant battles. And why so? Because this battle would determine that whether the Mughals will rule India or, or there will be the return of, return of a native ruler, okay, a native Hindu ruler who was who was known as Hemu. Okay, Hemu is actually such a historical figure in our uh, nation's history who has been almost forgotten. If you ask any student that who was the person who actually took the oath as the last Hindu emperor of Delhi, so people would say Prithviraj Chauhan maybe. Okay, but dear students, this was Hem Chandra Vikramaditya, Hem Chandra Vikramaditya, who actually took the oath in the month of October, in the month of October, on the 7th of October, 1556, he took the oath as Samrat Hem Chandra Vikramaditya after defeating the Mughal armies at the Battle of Delhi. However, this tenure of Hemu that was not lived for long, that was a very short lived tenure. In fact, it just ended after a month or so. Okay, within a month, this rule was disposed. And how? Because the second battle that Hemu fought against the Mughal army, that was the battle of Panipat. And that battle decided the fate of Hemu on the defeating side. Okay, on the defeated side, so that means he was not able to continue his rule. So, what happened in this battle? Let's find out. And first of all, if we talk about the Battle of Panipat, so the second Battle of Panipat, in fact, that was fought between the forces of Samrat Hemchandra Vikramaditya, popularly called Hemu, the Hindu king who was ruling North India from Delhi, and the armies of Akbar on the November 5th, 1556. It was a decisive victory for Akbar's general. Khan Zaman first and Bairam Khan. Remember the two names. Khan Zaman first. Okay, Khan Zaman the first and Bairam Khan. Right, Bairam Khan. If you remember, if you remember Bairam Khan, so Bairam Khan was actually, you know, the Wakil Wazir of Humayu. Who was he? Wakil Wazir of Humayu, that means the advisor, right, chief advisor come prime minister of Humayu. He had been with Humayu throughout his thick and thin and that's why he was one of the most trusted generals, most trusted commanders of the Mughal army. Okay, everyone. Now, if we talk about the battle of Panipat, the background of this battle. So, as we all know that Humayu met with a tragic accident met with a tragic accident when he fell off the stairs of his library in Delhi itself and fell to the death, right? He fell to the death. However, at that time when Humayu died, at that time Akbar along with Bairam Khan, both of them, they were present at Kalanaur in Punjab, okay? So, on 24th of January, Humayu died in Delhi and at that time Akbar at Kalanor, he was present at Kalanor, he was just 13 years old, all right? And what happened that on the 14th February, 1556, Akbar was enthroned as the 
enthroned as the king of the Mughal Empire or Mughal Kingdom. So at the time of his accession, what happened? The Mughal rule that was not very much widespread. In fact, let me tell you that Humayu, Humayu had just returned to India after winning the battle of Sarhind, after winning the battle of Sarhind. Remember that this battle of Sarhind is this could have been another battle which defined the history of India and why so because in the battle of Sarhind Humayu Humayu defeated Humayu defeated Sikandar Shah Sur okay Sikandar Shah Suri who was claiming who was claiming to be the successor of the Suri Empire in the northern parts, especially in the Punjab region. So that means, that means at the time already the Suri dynasty was already in the tatters. Basically, they were scattered into several sub successors and therefore Humayu, Humayu was successful in defeating one of the stakeholders who was Sikandar Shah Suri in the battle of Sarhind and that battle was fought in the year 1555. After that battle, what happened? Humayu again regained the throne, but he died accidentally and then Akbar was coronated, right? Akbar was coronated in the month of February 1556. By that time, what was happening on the other side of the history? What was happening here in India, in the Gangetic Doab, in the Bengal region, in the Bihar region, what was happening? So basically, there were, right? There were three different successors to the Suri dynasty. Let me tell you, after Sher Shah Suri, what happened? There was Islam Shah. There was Islam Shah, the son of Sher Shah, whose name was Jalal. He took the title of Islam Shah and became the next emperor. But in the year 1555, when he died, then there were Sikandar Shah. Okay. There was a Muhammad Shah, there was Adil Shah, so different, different claimants to the throne of the, uh, you know, throne of the empire of Suris, there were different claimants for that. And Hemu, Hemu, he was the prime minister come advisor in chief to Islam Shah, the son of Sher Shah Suri. So, under his reign, Hemu rose as a commander, as a strategist and as a military leader. So, after that, he also started, you know, so, uh, seeing that dream. He also have, uh, started to have that dream that uh, I will also establish my own empire at uh, Delhi, right? So, that means he, after that, what happened? After that, Samrat Hemchandra Vikramaditya or Hemu, who was actually the Hindu ruler of Delhi, right he actually saw the dream of dream of establishing his own kingdom at delhi what happened that he belonged to rewadi remember rewadi is in haryana sujata uh, how to start the preparation of upsc so i think uh, the current topic is something else right and there are the videos there are the videos that i have taken that several other teachers have taken that how to start the preparation of upsc for now, you just need to work on your work on your basics and these things are the part of the basics. Okay, so focus here at least one topic that will be prepared right now. So after that, you can go back, you can search the syllabus, you can uh, read through the NCRTs, you can take such topics which are related to the fundamental knowledge of history. So that's how we do the preparation now. So if we talk about, right, if we talk about Hemu, so he belonged to Rewadi in present day Haryana, who was actually the advisor of Islam Shah, as I told you. And Hemu had won 22 battles as the prime minister of Islam Shah. Good morning, Priya. You know what? There are the legends, there are the stories that Hemu, he had never, he had never been defeated into any battles. 22 battles which he had won. The last battle of his life, that was the second battle of Panipat, which 
he was defeated in and that was the last battle because he was killed as well in that battle okay not just that at the time of the humayu's death hemu had just quelled a rebellion in bengal killing the bengal ruler muhammad shah in war okay so bengal ruler muhammad shah was killed by hemu in a rebellion just before just before the coronation of akbar so then he started a campaign winning the battles through the northern india attacked agra and also defeated the mughal armies stationed at agra stationed at agra mughal armies were under the uzbek commander in agra he did not even force he did not even face the armies of hemu he simply fled away from there he simply fled okay after that the large area of itawa kalpi and agra provinces comprising the present day bihar and up that came under the hemu's control that came under the hemu's control and hemu moved towards delhi hemu moved towards delhi now these are all the preparations these are all the you can say pre incidents to the pre incidents or pre occurrences to the second battle of panipat hemu is actually you know staying fast his march towards the delhi on the other side akbar and his associates they were stationed in punjab only at kalanaur only waiting and waiting for hemu to you know get exhausted to get uh, you know tired up after frequent wars after frequent battles so what happened that hemu moved towards delhi and he stationed his forts uh, his forces outside delhi at tugalkabad fort and on the 6th of october army encountered the mughal resistance here akbar's forces were akbar's forces were commanded by tardi beg who escaped and thus allowing hemu hemu to capture delhi around 3000 mughal soldiers they were killed so this is not the battle of panipat this is the battle of delhi in which hemu won that battle defeated mughals and captured delhi and became became samrat hemchandra vikramaditya right he was crowned at purana kila okay purana kila and established hindu rule in the north india however if we talk about that if we talk about the battlefield events the battlefield events in the you know battle of panipat so what happened after losing delhi bairam khan reorganized the harwal a mancula what is the meaning of harwan a mancula remember the terminologies upsc loves the terminologies they ask the questions from the terminologies what is this term harwal a mancula that means such forces such forces which are having right forces having extreme right extreme striking capability right, extreme strike capabilities that means the forces which were which were extremely strong and they had the capacity to penetrate deep down the armies of the opponents such forces were called by the mughals as harwal a mancula harwal a mancula so the mughals put their experienced soldiers and introduced a new unit called as altamash called as altamash so the altamash was a new army unit composed by the mughals especially to fight the second battle of panipat against him and what was the speciality of that uh, that particular army that was a reserve force behind the center of mughal army these altamash soldiers they used to defend the safeguard they actually safeguarded the central command of the mughal armies remember that central command that was actually held by the commander in chief sometimes the king himself sometimes the chief commander or sometimes a trusted general so who was most important in the entire army he used to stay in the center so that there was the last in fact there was the least chances of that commander getting killed okay everyone now 
सो दे ऑल्सो डेवलप द फ्लैंक आर्च इज कॉल्ड एज द उक्सी कॉल्ड एज उक्की वॉट इज दिस उक्की उक्की वॉज बेसिकली द फ्लैंक आर्चर्स ओके फ्लैंक आर्चर्स मीन्स वॉट बेसिकली द आर्चर्स हु शूट द एरोज बट दे वेयर दे वेयर यू नो वर्किंग लाइक द विंग्स ऑफ द बर्ड विंग्स ऑफ द बर्ड सो लेट मी टेल यू दैट समथिंग लाइक दैट सपोज दिस वॉज दिस वॉज द बॉडी ऑफ द बर्ड दिस वॉज द फ्रंट आर्मी ओके फ्रंट आर्मी एंड दिस वॉज दिस वॉज द फ्लैंक so here the archers would be stationed here the deep penetration army that is harwal a mankul that will be that will be stationed and here at the center at the center there will be the altamash there will be the altamash so this is how this entire system was established this is how the entire planning was done now if we actually see the battle so mughals deployed in their vanguard under the muhammad qasim the left wing was under iskandar khan and right wing was under abdullah khan okay they also they also dug a ditch okay they also dug a ditch to protect their central wing what is a ditch right a type of a steep uh, uh, that is a steep crevice okay a steep pit you can say khai okay so their main aim was to implement their famous tulgma tactics as they did under the babar so they again wanted to implement the same tulgma system which they had used in the first battle of panipat when babar had defeated the lodhi armies and situations were quite similar hemu also had lots of elephants like lodhi armies babar's army were also smaller like akbar's army Babar also had the flank winged archers. Okay, here also the archers were the main force along with the cavalry. Babar also had the gun artilleries, right? Artillery guns. Here also the artillery guns were there. So there was hardly any difference in the circumstances. Just the only difference that was that Ibrahim Lodi in the first battle of Panipat he was nowhere close. as in the commander as in the commanding capacities that was that was with hemu okay so the capacities which hemu had that right those capacities were absent in ibrahim lodi so on the other hand hemu deployed an army in the same formation as he did in the battle of delhi so he placed elephants in the vanguard cavalry in the first line and infantry in the second line okay so that was his strategy got it everyone that was his strategy now you can see this picture and uh, you will understand exactly what was the location what was their location now so basically this is right this is the arrangement of this is the arrangement of the mughal army you can see the flank archers right you can see the reserve force altamash defending right defending the commander in chief then you can see the front line led by muhammad qasim okay bairam khan and akbar they were the commander in chief so they were defended by the two wings of the armies okay then you can see here the flank archers once again on the two extremes then another group of army was led by iskandar khan and abdullah khan so basically three distinct groups they were marching towards the battlefield then this was the huge ditch dig for the protection now coming to the hemu's army you can see here here hemu himself was leading with the elephants at the vanguard at the vanguard means at the front then the left and right left and the right side that was entrusted upon the shadi khan and ramaiya and then there were the other reserve forces right so this is like that this is like this particular arrangement which hemu had followed actually this was a a risky setup hemu who was a very able commander he would have defeated the mughal army obviously he was doing very good but at the same time he was also risking his own life 
someone may say that he was not a coward he did not want to hide behind the you know forces but at the same time we should also think that if the commander is if the commander is injured or killed the entire army is simply you know it's simply in the disdain okay so that means we can say that uh, this strategy was followed it was having the chances of giving having the chances of giving you know mixed results now so as we all know as we all know so iskandar khan and abdullah khan charged the hemu's right and left muhammad qasim ordered his horse archers to target the legs of hemu's war elephant so mughals started targeting the legs of the elephant basically the elephants of the you know hemu's army and due to that what happened due to that it was thought that uh, elephants would be turning back on the hemu's army and hemu will be defeated right straight right however hemu was a smart commander he understood the tulugma system he actually knew about it and therefore he was aware and therefore immediately ordered his both flanks for a tactical retreat to isolate mughal centers when the mughal center under shah kuli shah ali kuli became isolated hemu ordered his elephant units to smash the mughal center okay so mughal right center that was targeted that was targeted very tactically by hem chandra vikramaditya that means we can say that due to the earlier knowledge of the tulugma system hemu had studied that system very deeply and he was able to crash the mughal center instantly right so we could say that he was near the victory he was almost near the victory however there was uh, there was an accident now let me tell you in the history the smallest of the moments they can have the capacity to redefine the entire upcoming century remember this was that moment who was that archer who actually shot an arrow and that arrow just pierced the eyes of hemu okay it just pierced the eye of the hemu and it just went through his skull hemu felt unconscious he felt unconscious in the in the hose of in the hose of the elephant's back right the story ended there itself because when the commanders when the commanders fell the armies often retreated that was the system in the medieval period right because army was actually composite it was a composite structure belonging to the different you know smaller commanders different units all of them were actually guarded by the commander in chief when he fell down everything was everything was lost so that means the arrow actually hit the hemu's right eye and due to the continuous loss of blood he felt unconscious and armies immediately started retreating when they could not trace hemu on the back of his elephant right so in fact his commanders mahipal shadi khan ramaiya they were all killed during this during this battle at panipat so his fleeing armies you know his fleeing armies also took the elephant away from the battlefield the elephant on which hemu was sitting and after that what happened after that when the war ended several hours after the war ended the dead body of hemu was located and captured by shah kuli khan mehram shah kuli khan mehram now listen to this story very carefully dead body of hemu was captured by mughal armies okay and it was brought to akbar's tent in the camp located at the village saudapur currently located in panipat city haryana okay general baram khan the commander of akbar's army baram khan he was uh, wishing that akbar should be beheading the dead body of the hindu king so that he could earn the title gazi earn the title gazi akbar he initially refused to you know he refused to kill or in fact mutilate the body of a dead soldier who was already blood soaked however there are many historians 
there are many historians for example uh, a contemporary writer whose name was muhammad arif kandhari uh, the contemporary historian who composed the book called as tawarikh e akbari remember this name this book called tawarikh e akbari was written by muhammad arif kandhari he says that he says that akbar did not hesitate in following the orders or the instructions of baram khan and he rose he picked his sword he picked his sword and beheaded the dead body of baram khan and celebrated in vain to have the title of ghazi okay so basically that was the initial time this is how the mughals uh, celebrated the victories over the enemies not just that in fact after after what happened after the death of hemu his ancestors his family his patrons you know his parents his entire family was traced down in the rewadi region of haryana and the entire region was beheaded right good morning nupur entire region was beheaded and again the same story the human skulls were formed okay human skulls were you know they were formed in the shape of a pyramid and that was celebrated as the sign as a symbol of victory okay so that is how that is how actually the victories were celebrated so his head was sent to kabul to be hanged outside the delhi darwaza while his body was gibbeted on the gate in the purana kila where he had his coronation on the 7th of october 7th of october okay so we can say that we can say that such type of uh, celebration methods were used just to indicate the extent of the victory that the mughals had obtained all right everyone so not just that several supporters and the relatives of hemu were beheaded and the minaret was erected of the human skulls human skulls this painting now remember this point this painting of the human skull minaret right that was basically one of the popular 56 paintings of the akbar's life in his copy of akbar nama okay so that basically there was a minaret erected in the memory of this victory right and that minaret was basically made up of the human skulls that was actually one of the paintings given in the akbar nama so if we talk about right if we talk about the consequences so a memorial for hemu was erected at the spot in panipat where he was beheaded this is called as the hemu's samadhi sthal basically is this is a much later construction let me tell you and after his death what happened adil shah adil shah sur who was uh, the remaining successor of the suri's dynasty there right his fortunes actually took a bad turn he was defeated and killed by khizr khan the son of muhammad khan sur of bengal in april 1557 all right after the defeat the armies of hemu right they were dismantled and 120 war elephants were taken as capture by the mughal army apart from that the major consequence that was that was the reestablishment of reestablishment of reestablishment and consolidation of the mughal rule okay consolidation of mughal rule so after this at least at least for you can say uh, 200 years at least for 200 years you would observe that the mughals they ruled successfully continuously however at least for 150 years from this point onwards 1556 up to 1707 151 year the mughals they remained the supreme power in the indian subcontinent and they ruled without much without much resistance all right everyone so that was a significant battle which made its indents into the indian history permanently had this battle not been won by the mughals we won't be having any stories related to related to akbar related to jahangir shah jahan aurangzeb 
nothing entire history of india might have been different so dear students in this series we are actually bringing the most significant battles those battles which had the capacity to redesign the entire indian history restructure the entire indian history all right good morning bulbul gupta very good morning so we can say that we can say that this entire map took shape only because of the second battle of panipat had this not had this not been won by the mughal armies this entire area this entire area that might never have come under the mughal rule that's a reality okay everyone so that is all in today's session i hope that uh, this session was very useful for all of you to have the interest in the beginnings in the journey of indian history so basically if you are loving this session and you want to enroll yourself for the upsc preparation with us so this is a very important program called as the prelims to interview program that is a p2i where we are starting the fresh batches from the 19th of june 2023 and those batches will be having the uh, you can say inclusive preparation where not just the prelims but prelims mains and interviews all the three stages will be separately targeted and the candidates will be guided accordingly in fact for their mains related uh, preparations if they are able to clear the prelims they will be called to the campus of the study iq at ncr and along with the free accommodations they will be they would be give, given the complete guidance for the mains related preparations so here you have got the opportunity to enroll for this particular batch you use the code asr live so that will be giving you the benefits of the fees because uh, the original cost of the course is 60000 rupees if you are using this code asr live then you will be getting this course just as rupees 30000 so that's all from my side thank you so much and if you want the ppts or the pdf of this content this material so you can join my telegram group as well by scanning this particular qr code and so guys thank you so much and uh, let's meet in the next battle tomorrow so tomorrow we will be talking about another battle which reshaped the indian indian history till then please revising it please keep revising it and take care everyone bye bye have a great day thanks a lot